uh, detailing fundamentals. In this session, we're going to have a look at creating part lists. Now, creating part lists is almost a fully automatic um, procedure, so we're also going to have a look at some very basic editing just to help you out with some fine tuning. Now, the part list creation can be a fairly clever little addition to Pro Structures. In its basic form though, without doing any customization, the user will probably have to turn off everything except what he'd like to create the part list of. So if you just want members, or you just want shafts, or you just want purlins, um, it might be just simpler to use your display classes and turn everything off. Now in this instance I'm going to turn everything off except for fittings, members and bolts in my display classes. Um, just for this example, but you could really break it down by turning everything off in the model except for what you wanted to have in the part list also. So we're going to kick off by going to the Pro Steel tasks and A1 is create a part list database. Now we can create it with uh, 3D elements or 2D pos flags. The common way is your 3D elements. The 2D pos flags is for a marking plan environment. Now we have a whole heap of options here as well that we can um, go through, but the common ones for us is verify the position number, which means the object needs a part number before it will come into this list. Um, we could create an additional XML file, but I don't recommend to do it here. I'll show you how to do it a different way. Um, NC cut angles. Now another one is don't hide the processed elements. I leave that off which means it shows me when something didn't make it to the part list. The next thing is um, select your object types. If you've got pro structures, you'll want all of it. If you want pro steel, you won't need uh, concrete or rebar objects. And our bolts are without pos number if you don't normally position number your bolts. Okay, now the final thing is our output file. Um, I just write it to a standard name database, which means it's going to prompt me each time to overwrite the last database. You could actually have it with a date stamp if you wish. Okay, we're going to kick off by creating a part list with bolts. I do that all the time anyway. And it's prompted me here that there is an existing database already created with the same name. Like I said, there would be, so just tick OK, it'll overwrite the last one. And you know, I can either choose all or I can window the job. I'm a big fan of just windowing what I want rather than choose all. But that's me. Um, our pretty our standard uh, warning that just says you can't undo while you're doing this. Don't show me this again in this session. Tick OK. And it's writing all the information for this project off to a database now. When it's ready, it will come up like it just did. Now, I want to show you this. A lot of new users get this. I appear to be locked out now. Now, what happened was I accidentally clicked my mouse while it was creating, and it's gone to the back behind here. See, it's on a second screen. When this part list uh, definition is open, you can't do anything in the Pro Steel environment. Okay, nothing will happen. It looks like it's frozen. So just be aware, while this is open, everything else is frozen out because we've actually switched to a different program um, that is grafted into pro structures so we're going to go to delivery and I'm going to show you what to do with these guys a little bit later we're just for now we're going to switch straight to um, these four down the bottom um, we're going to kick off with select a bolt list just to make it nice and easy and it will take you out to the Pro Structures directory in whatever localization you're in. In this instance, Australia part list. Um, and there's a whole heap of Bentley samples here. Um, as you can see, I would encourage everybody to go and have a look and see which ones work for your business the best. In this instance, I know I want a bolt list, which means Bentley have provided me a bolt list already to trial. Um, and it will be a pretty good base for me to work or build up on in the future. With the part list selected, now we're tempted to either push it to a printer or to preview it. I'm going to preview it in this instance, and this is my deliverable straight out of the box. Okay, so all of the bolts that belong to this actual project. 
um, including their position number if you had it ticked on. All right. Um, additional things we can do, so we'll go to single parts now, and if I come down to choose something along the lines of, let's go uh, just a standard order list that is, uh, I don't want horizontal, I want a vertical one, preview that. So these are a list of the single parts that belong to the job and broken into their, their object types. And we'll also include the total length and total mass, etc., of each object type. The next, we'll have a look at our construction group. So these are our group lists, like our group containment list. We preview this one. You can see that the group is split up into the main group number and description, as well as all the components that make that group up. This is a real, this is one of my favourite lists. This one. Okie dokes, let's move on to having a look at the settings. Now, if you recall, I said you could save defaults off. That is done here, default uh, part list assignment. And if we expand this down, let's have a look at bolts as an example, the bolt list we did before. If I double click on this one, I can select the, the vertical bolt list and OK that. And if I go to delivery now, when I come to bolt list, here is my favorite list. So this can be a list of favorites that go into here, making it very, very quick to produce your standard lists. The next thing we'll have a look at is we'll have a look at actually editing the structure of the part list. So let's go back to bolts again, because we've been playing with this one. Our part list is broken into three common areas, a header, the actual data table itself where the data or information lives and down the bottom here is our footer. Now a header and footer quite often go together but you could have a separate footer if you want. Now the footer and the header you'll see here if I double click on it I can't get into it. I can't I can't edit this. This is because it is um, an attachment. It's like referenced into, into here. So the only thing I can actually edit is the table itself. And if I double click in here, you can see that it's broken into headers and data lines. And you can make that out with the tabs across the top there. Let's jump out of here. Now, if I switch from layout position to layout, you, it stands out a little bit more what the header and the data lines are. Um, this is a single part list, so it doesn't have group header or group data. Uh, and these are just text. You can tell it's text because of the little quotation marks at the beginning and end. Now, you can just edit these. You can double click it or you can single click and a little sort of edit box will come up however you want to do it. So I'll, I'll just put some uh, capital uh, letters at the beginning of these just to show you an example. And that will then push through up into your actual part list. Now the data line is a little bit more um, involved where it actually pulls information from the database to create this. So it's at the moment the position number from my list is going to get pulled through into here. So that's the variables in the part list. And you can see here we've got um, your angles, um, the end angle one, angle two, area class number, area class name, etc., etc. There's all sorts of stuff that we can bring out here and, and it pulls through from the actual part list database. Just please make sure if you do any editing in here, you do a backup of the original file first so that if you have a little accident, you've always got a backup copy. Now the thing you're most likely to want to edit is this header, whether it's the graphic, whether it's the labels or the spelling isn't right or the layout isn't right. So let's go and edit the header within here. So I'll close out of the bolt list and we'll go back to edit part list definition. And if you have a look up the top here, there's a vertical header. It's the one that gets pulled through to everything. And you can see the footers down the bottom in this instance as well. So, you know, there's a spelling mistake here. If I double click on it, you'll just see it's formatted text. So it's very easy to edit. Um, the graphic here, if you double click on it, it will take you back to the part list folder here. And you can just put your company logo in. So let's just say that this uh, Pro Concrete bitmap was uh, the one that I wanted. You can just bring it straight through. Now I'll just undo that. 
and let's go and have a look at this footer. The footer again is just going to be formatted text so double click on the formatted text and you should be able to write overwrite this and write anything you want. A little tip that if you hold down control and scroll with your wheel it will zoom in so sometimes the text is a little bit small to read. So as I said at the beginning once I exit out of here everything should disappear off the screen. If it didn't disappear off here it means it didn't go in a part list so just be wary that if there's residual things left behind just make sure you didn't want it on a part list. Now to bring this back I just go control Z okay undo which just brings my objects back for me. Now just a little sneaky alternative to this is if you want to bring everything back if we come to Pro Structures task R1, 2, 3, 4, 5 that is like refresh all turns everything on. That's a sneaky little tip too for people. Enjoy the part list, they're uh, pretty user friendly and very easy to manipulate.